1980, my dad built me a special playset that made me the envy of the neighborhood. And now, Lobot, you will teach us the secrets of the Rebel Base. No security system will keep us out of the Rebel Base. You there, open this door right now. Ah! Oh, snap. It's getting a little too hot in this place. Chewie, we gotta get out of here. R2, bring down that elevator. Oh, man. Try view screen number two. Oh, snap. Good form, son. You're clear for takeoff at hangar bay number 43. Chewy, see if you can get this thing started. Hello YouTube, how you doing? My name is Trevor Slescu, owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Now, when I was a young boy, 1980, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back had just hit the theaters. And of course, I was about six years old at the time. And being a young kid, of course, we all loved playing with Star Wars action figures from Kenner. And I got one of these sets. Of course, it was the Cantina set. And I was pretty excited. But my dad, of course, he was a, a draftsman for TELUS, telephone company. Actually, it was BC Tell at the time. My dad, growing up in the 1930s in the Great Depression, he saw a lot of Buck Rogers on the old serials when they used to play them in the movie theaters. In the case you guys don't know what a serial is, it was a series of movies, little short ones that they would play each week to get the kids to come back to the movie theaters. This is before internet, before TV, before all that kind of stuff when there was only the movies and radio. So, of course, my dad, being a young kid back in the 30s, would grow up with serials like Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon, and, of course, all the other sci-fis of the 1930s and 40s, as well as westerns and everything else. And as my dad progressed in his life, of course, Star Trek came on TV, followed by Star Wars, which continues where our story is, with me being a young kid. So, of course, we had picked up the cantina scene, and my dad, looking at it, thought, hmm, this is pretty limited and kind of cheaply made. <laughs> of course, my dad, being a uh, high-quality draftsman and everything he also did woodworking so my dad figured hey i'm gonna make something really cool for my son since of course he had two daughters as well they both had doll houses and of course my son won't want a doll house but i can make a star wars thing that's far better than the cantina set so today i'm gonna show you what my dad made and now, Lobot, you will teach us the secrets of the Rebel Base. Here we have the main area of the Rebel Base. And as you can see, it's quite tall. <laughs> we have an upper deck up here with all the control panels and interesting buttons, which we'll get into in a minute. These are spinners. So you put a figure on top and you can spin them around. There's fixed pegs along here for the operators. Dad's got a bunch of details underneath as well. And then we've got this neat walkway, a functional laser gun that you can move and swivel. The elevator here on this side. And then we've got more of these sliders to operate people around. This idea also came from a model railway place that we had that was a Wild West building and the gangsters were hiding in a little building in here on a slider much like this one. Then when the train came out you'd stop the train and then you'd move this and the gangsters would come out with their handguns ready to shoot into the train and all this sort of stuff. So that's where these half semicircle things came from. Because you got angle sliders here as well. There is one you can't really see that's down here that puts a guy there and swings him into this escalator. The escalator has a hand crank, which of course you can crank to move your guys up and down to, from the bottom level to the top. Still works after all this time. It's a giant rubber band in here. <laughs> so that's fairly interesting. Uh, inside in the pink room, Dad made these doors to slide back and forth. Again, with his own design etched into them. 
And there's a little computer console in here with slider levels, sort of like the Star Trek transporter. Dad made this whole thing using corrugated aluminum and all kinds of great interesting things. Plastic from an old fridge door. Again, very Buck Rogers-like. This piece had broken off, but I had it, so I re-glued it on. And uh, there's all the gauges and everything. There is a trap door as well. You can pull the lever. And it hinges down here. So let's uh, move the camera around and get a closer view of everything. My dad made these screens using some aluminum, which he bent in a metal press, and he put in these clear panels. These are sized for any of the old collectible uh, playing cards, or trading cards, pardon me, that you could just drop them in from the top, and then it would fill the screen. And here's all the panels and gauges that my dad created. This, of course, is the inside of the calculator found in the other room with a bit of my dad's little engineering pieces here and there. It's unfortunate that the plastic on this has yellowed over time, but you can see these panels. My dad made these out of uh, pieces of clear sprue from model car kits, as well as some wires in there. It used to be purple, I think yellow, there was red in here, and another yellow and a uh, blue. <laughs> getting my colors. This little device here, if you move the lever down, you can see it changes the colors of the readouts. Again, another thing made out of tin and painted. This is our lever for the trap door. You just pull it up and as you can see, it operates the trap door. You have to forgive me, I can't get the tripod in here. This is a panel my dad made out of two pieces of cardboard. Sort of looks like the Cygnus from Black Hole in here. I don't know if that was the intention. Uh, again, there's the lever, or the button that you push. The spring-loaded little arm here. My dad was making cap guns at the same time as building this. So he used some of that technology. It's a little locking mechanism underneath. Here again is another instrument panel out of cardboard. And I do believe this is a recipe for something in French underneath here, because you can see pour to something or other. Uh, interesting little bits and pieces that my dad drew in here. Little, little triangles he cut out. And this here is a barcode, as you can see, with a bunch of levers put in place. And this is supposed to be a viewing screen. Actually, take a look at that. You can see the Millennium Falcon. Again, forgive some of the shadows here. Uh, there's a little bit of that corrugated metal, in case you need to wash your laundry on here. <laughs> and then another panel. Now, this funny little hose piece, my dad had a metal tin snips. And uh, they were like a gun with a little blade that went up and down in there. And this is what you get when you cut a piece of tin get this wrinkly funny pattern on there so my dad utilized that as a kind of a hose and then up here we have a panel and this one it's some kind of uh, plastic maybe in there uh, what do they call that stuff the sign users use it corbidite or something uh, again the reds sort of faded out here this one you can never see through it, it was sort of like a static screen and then, like I was saying before, these are the panels where you put in those cards. Here's a better view of that monitor. And as you can see, it's the Millennium Falcon in here. And it's got the 1980 Kenner toys underneath. Chewie, Han, uh, Leia, looks like 3PO, probably some others in there. I can't really see. Um, but this was actually cut from a Kenner advertisement. Here we have some under panel detail, and as you can tell, my dad uh, sunk this in here and used another piece of tin or aluminum, made up these little bars that stick out. Of course, some of them are copper, others are aluminum and whatnot. And this one I think my dad especially made with the red in the center. Again, quite a lot of cool detail. There is another one, we'll just take a look at that right now. Here's our secondary panel for underneath our control panel. And there's a bunch of brass loops, copper loops, in here that you can see. And again, some more rods stuck out.
And now, Lobot, you will teach us the secrets of the Rebel base. All right, Lord Vader, whatever you say. How do we work this thing? Well, whatever you do, don't touch that button over there. So that button disturbs you? Yeah, don't press it. What, this one here? Well, I told him not to press it. No security system will keep us out of the Rebel base. You there, open this door right now. Ah! I don't think that was a lever for the door. Oh, I think I broke my leg. How is the progress going on our prisoners? I don't know, sir. Well, let's see it on the view screen. All right, you turn on view screen number one. This does not look very good. Try view screen number two. Oh, snap. Here we have the Buck Rogers style cannon, which of course is on a swivel up here, and it also lifts up, so you can fire at enemies down below in the base, or on the um, platform there. Of course it has a limited range, but still fairly interesting. You're clear for takeoff at hangar bay number 43. The pink control room is divided into two halves by the sliding doors. And on this half, once you slide the doors over, you can see this amazing control panel that my dad created. Again, it's very similar to a Star Trek uh, transporter. It has five levers on it that slide forward and then spring back into position. On the monitor up above, now this is one of the cards that you can't take out because of the fact that there's a roof up top. Uh, we used a planet, I think this is, with Snaggletooth's face on it. I guess uh, they're trying to contact Snaggletooth down below to get some sort of information on the rebels or something. I don't know. <laughs> can't quite remember the whole story behind that from like 1980. However, you can see this nice detail work. I'll try to get in a little closer with the camera here. There's this sort of anodized blue on here. And then this blue is from the uh, re old refrigerator that we had. And Dad drilled holes in it and cut little squares and whatnot. Again, all the little lights under here are painted or cardboard. One of the two. Got a lot of brass tubing as well as aluminum tube. And the corrugation, Dad wrapped it around the pillars of the base of the console. And there's the control panel from the top. You can see all the nice detail work Dad put in there. On the second side of the pink room, we have this neat little pillar here that my dad created. Again, using some woodwork tools. He took a wooden dowel and then cut some flat sides on it and attached all these little loops and bends. And then up top, he's got all these little crystals that are cut off. These, again, are model car uh, parts trees. And up above, there's a camera, just to make sure everybody's doing their job properly. A little hard to rotate with my little stick, so I just put my big hand right in here. As you can see, it turns. It also pivots up and down. This camera kind of reminds me of the old ones they used on uh, radio, or sorry, TV stations back in the 1950s. Actually, if we swing it around again, you can take a look on this side too. Ah, there you go. Uh, but if we swing it to the front, you can see the three different lenses, just like an old TV style camera. You got the little close up lens, the medium distance lens, and the big wide angle lens down below. Oh, and up top is again more of that uh, wrinkle, crinkle stuff that my dad cut with the tin snips. If you look at the outer wall in the pink room, you will see again more of this mesh that's on the side. And as we can take a look at the outside and see how that looks over there. Here we have the outside wall just underneath the escalator and you can see how my dad treated that wall.
The walkway down below is made out of, again, bent aluminum. Very shiny. Uh, you can see that the paint didn't really stick too well on here. And then this screen, of course, my dad folded it in and pinched over the tin on the top and bent it underneath, but does give a nice little detail. Now, one of the most coolest features of the entire Rebel base is, of course, this working elevator that my dad came up with. It is a tube. I do believe my dad actually bent this around. He also made this operational elevator car inside with, of course, a pin so you can put your action figure's foot on it. This side of the wall of the car is open, so it's basically a cylinder with the back and a little uh, thin piece up here. It's so that when the car comes up to the top, it'll line up with the walkway and the room on the other side. It's easy to operate the elevator. You just lift it up here, and there's a notch which you can see up here, which of course will lock the rod in place so it doesn't fall down. And then, of course, the cool part is you can pull your action figure out of here or out from the other room. And I like how my dad's painted this. This is a white arrow that comes up here and goes off the top, and a brown arrow that comes down here and goes out this way. It's really amazing stuff. So we can bring our elevator car back down, and as you can see, it is rotating around here so that the action figure can come out at the base. It's getting a little too hot in this place. Chewy, we gotta get out of here. R2, bring down that elevator. Oh, man. Here's the upper deck area of our space station. And in this open area is a view down into the hangar deck. Or the uh, garage, whatever. And here you can see some of the panels that my dad made. And then here we've got our uh, space calculator for doing your income tax. <laughs> no, we found this uh, old calculator in the junk somewhere. So my dad took it all apart and made it into this interesting panel. Again, more of his aluminum work. Polished. Brass work, all polished. This used to have a little grill on it with a little cover up here. But somehow in the uh, span of time it kind of disappeared. There's our sliding doors, which again if you just move this you can see they open up. Nice clack on there. Over here we have an elevator which we'll see from the main room. As you can see my dad painted on all this checkerboard pattern. Again made sliders. Now, you may be wondering, how did my dad get all this stuff in here, the sliders and everything? Well, when I was young, I snuck down in the basement and watched him build this thing. What he did is he took plywood, or I can't remember if he took plywood apart, or he made his own plywood out of thinner sheets. Not 100% sure anymore. Of course, my dad's long gone. Can't really ask him. Anyway, he let's just say he separated the plywood into three pieces. So you got the bottom, the middle section, and the top section. So on the bottom section is a flat piece of plywood with nothing in it. No grooves or anything. In the middle layer he made little um, channels and whatnot for these to go through. Actually I can see how he did it right here. He's used that um, uh, was it the one quarter masonite stuff? Anyway, so uh, he um, made all the little routes and pathways for these sliders to work in. And then he put them through on the top piece of plywood, which has the grooves for all this stuff. And that's how he did it. So, same with the doors. Dad made a mechanism. You can see where it attaches here and here. These little pins. <laughs> there's another one down here. And there's somewhere in here is a spring that my dad put in, so that when you slide this across the top, the spring will pull it back. Actually, I think the spring's in here on this bottom bolt, and these swing up. They're uh, half circles. Something to that effect. Anyway, there's our top deck of our battle station. I'm afraid, Princess, you'll have to come with me. 
Why should I come with you? Because I had to make a special arrangement. What do you mean? Oh, snap! Come with me, Your Highness. Chewie, see if you can get this thing started. On the lower decks of the Rebel base, my dad made this amazing hangar deck, as you see here. And, I mean, look at the detail in here. He's made all these uh, cool gauges, sort of like boiler type stuff. On here, he's got an instrument panel with a lot of wires and tubes running around. He's used corrugated tin on this door here. And then on this side, we actually have a red portal window, as well as a screen, and a bunch more of these sort of Buck Rogers style um, tubes and science fiction instruments. And then the creme de la creme is, of course, these operating hangar doors. You lift up and they open. Take a look at those from the outside in just a minute here. Uh, the shuttle bay is designed again with these slider rods so that you could put an action figure on the pin and move them along. Dad put a curve in at the end there. These two are sort of straight. Of course, you got to have one on one end and the other on the other, otherwise they lock in place. This was ideas from the Kenner play sets. Now looking at our inner wall, you can see this sort of robotic kind of laser gun looking thing that my dad made up. But I had painted in all the little uh, dots and dials on here. Um, of course, this is sort of rubbed off with time, but if you move this this way, you'll notice this door over here will slide open. That, of course, is the operating features, influenced by Star Trek. Here we have our opening doors from the outside of the structure. And as you can see, these are made out of aluminum plate. And my dad drilled holes and bent these wires and rods in here just to give it some sort of detail so they weren't just straight and flat. Dad also made this hinge arrangement. There's a lever up above in the other room. Uh, if you lift the lever straight up, the doors will flip open. This one opens upward and this one opens downward. I had to reconstruct it because the screw my dad used was a little too small up top and this whole thing was broken in here and it was left with the door hanging down and there's a wire rod up in here and one down there. So I reconstructed this and got it working, but it always had a little bit of a fault to it. It can only go so far on that lever. And then you have to assist it with your hand here just to get it open. And there we can see that our Chewbacca is trying to make an escape with the Imperial Troop Transporter. Now, unfortunately, there isn't enough room to turn this transporter complete 90 degrees. But in the world of Star Wars Pretend, you know, you can always move it along with your hand there and get it out. Now, from this angle of the outer wall of our Rebel base, you can see this amazing paintwork that my dad put on here. This awesome Cloud City pattern. This panel here is made out of tin. My dad had a huge collection of tin. I do believe this came from a fuel tank, sort of like a Coleman stove one. Um, dad nailed it all the way up here along the wall and around the curve, just so it would hold shape. Here's again more of these Buck Roger style panels. This red window was actually made from plastic from a taillight from a car. And then, of course, over here we've got those steel doors again. Here's the top piece of that upper shield, and as you can see, my dad drilled all these little holes in here, and then uh, bent over the edges just so that it wouldn't be so sharp. However, this piece was always a controversy, because uh, any kid, you know, could accidentally put his hand on here if he was uh, going to fall over or something. And get cut on this. <laughs> I mean, it is very thin. I'm talking like a sixteenth of an inch up here. Now, as you can see, there is a bit of uh, paint damage in here. When I got this back uh, out to my house in my older years here, 
Um, my nieces and nephews and stuff had played with this. They actually bent this over a bit. You can see the line across here. And this was dented in here, so I had to straighten it up with one of my bodywork tools, because I took a auto body collision repair. Just hammer it back into its original shape. I think I did a pretty good job, but you can still see that something happened to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great video, and if you want to see more stuff, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound the notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. Click up over here to help us out on Patreon so I can bring you more exciting videos. And until then, I'm off to save the secrets of the Rebel Base. Oh, snap!